Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we are going to continue our Royal Rumble campaign where I'm trying to beat the game. Well, beating is too much. It's too strong of a word. Where I'm trying to survive as long as possible in a campaign that has been so heavily modded that not even the developers of XCOM would uh, dare to play it. We're uh, going in with double enemy squad side. Uh, we're going in with uh, yellow alert. We're going in with a better advent and a ton of additional uh, content that just makes it so, so much more difficult. Overall, 90 plus mods. Uh, that will make uh, the life within this campaign a living hell. It is time for Operation Bone Face, which is our first operation in the second month, uh, to maybe get another scientist and I'm actually quite keen to do that because uh, despite all of the hardships that we have been through, if we can just secure more and more scientists, I will not fall behind the research curve and that means we will have hopefully soon uh, magnetic weapons and also hopefully soon an armor upgrade, which at least means we can stay in the game. Uh, we also want to counter, of course, uh, the permanent dark event that would give us a reduction in supplies by 50% throughout the entire campaign. And this time we are dealing with a specific side trap, Bandit Incursion, which is a new one. It uh, hopefully will get that third uh, faction, the bandits, in. So I am keen to see how this is going to uh, play out. We're fighting in the slums. We're going to see uh, Euler uh, coming back, as well as Grell, who has recovered. Sonar is back in business and Deli G will be on the sniping for us. I purchased a a flashbang grenade. Uh, Grell goes in with that extra healing so that we at least have two healing charges and that will be hopefully enough for us to stay alive. I am hoping that we can get the specialist up and running with extra healing charges soon so that we can at least counteract the minuscular and often spawning uh, hive that seems to be terrorizing us ever th uh, since. All right with that uh, let's go into the mission and see what we can do. Here we go. Relay is up ahead. Move in and destroy the target. Pretty good. We just landed. So we're in a corner. That's great. We're on high ground. That's even better. And the target is quite far away. So we're fighting on a large map. It was an easy mission, which means three alien packs and a side trap called Bandit Incursion. I can only assume that that means an additional pack. In a perfect world, Saiken would not need to fight against both the bandits and the aliens at the same time. In a realistic scenario, I would need to fight against everybody at the same time. Because it's XCOM and they will just aggro on me. But it would be fun to see them dish it out in between them. Let's charge in. Okay, so far I got away with murder. Good to go. No need to ask twice. Double movement, very aggressively. We're almost there. Fantastic, that's good. I haven't spotted something, which is odd. You would expect that they are somewhere near here. But apparently that's not the case, so... On the move. Moving on. Still nothing. Their north. We are close to the actual location. Let's just overwatch. Okay, that will not trigger because we're still hidden. Oh, look at that. Both of the factions meet. Oh, are they now going to have a shootout? They take cover. The bandits. Are taking cover. In 
and let it be a fear fierce firefight i want to see some action well i think we can't wait that long can we like this here yeah i think can't wait that long All right, we definitely got a guy back here. Now we got to be clever. It's a really, really target rich environment. So might as well use it uh, to our advantage. The sonar will get an aid protocol. Everybody's already triggered, so There we go. Sector is heavily, heavily wounded. That would finish the Sector. I think that's a fair use of our time. Nice. Even some loot. Fantastic. Um. I don't want to explode that yet if we can lure them a little bit closer that would not be a bad idea we're too clustered so i'll move there? a bit more over here uh, just to reduce the chance of grenades being used That is a gunner. I do not want to deal with a gunner, really. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to blow that up. All right, we still got one more gas station uh, that we could theoretically blow up. There is another pack back here, which is just aggroed. And there are additional enemies back there. Alright. They are definitely fighting with one another. And now these guys have aggroed as well. Okay, wow. That Purge guy, I think, needs to die. Very nice. The Bennett Rifleman is a good Mimic Beacon for us at this point, so I'd be careful to protect him. Do we have another... No, we don't have another option to grant us a defense. Five more turns. We're actually in a decent position here. I like him being there for now. I hope it's worth it. Moving over. We see something else. The answer is no, not yet. Still don't want to let this be blown up because I feel that they will use this here as a great piece of cover and that will in return give us the option to retaliate on them. Seventy nine percent. I think that's good enough. Um we're just going to overwatch. Which means now the aliens will need to deal with a bandit and will take shots at them. That means every single shot that he uh, eats is one less shot that we do not need to eat. And we're giving him even some covering fire. 
Okay. Well, our covering fire is neglectable at best, but the full cover here gave him a good position to stand in. Unfortunately, this whole thing will now no longer be an option. Okay, well, good enough. Bennett is stunned. Fantastic. That also means no movement for them. No! Reinforcements! We don't want reinforcements. But it is... Uh, I need to take that shot. Too good to pass it. Um, that's actually a decent play that we can uh, that we can do. So, Sonar moves up. This here is a no-brainer. We're waiting for the right moment. Very good. Next up, if an assault trooper needs to die. But unfortunately he does not, which is very disappointing. Let's move already. Oh. Okay, now we are even too far away to see him. Oh, I should have positioned myself here. Didn't check. That was not good. We need to reload, so we're ta we're still keeping the high ground. And I will keep an overwatch, which means either the assault trooper or the drone will likely die. A Mac, mm. not good. This is getting from bad to worse. Riot control Mac. Eight hit points. They do have a solid position, but we have the high ground against them, so we... I would argue we're still in the better spot. The enemies are doing a really good job in focus firing. I gotta give it to them. We have to reload with Diddy G, and the question of the day is, what do we do? Drone is a 50-50. Removing, removing that isn't a bad idea. So we can move in further. It's a good start. We still have one more overwatch and cannon will likely be the one that is pulling it, so let's help him. I need to advance because else the target is going to be no longer reachable. Taking the stun drone out. And I'm wondering if I should just use a grenade over here. Can almost reach it. That would be a kill and two. It's not bad. The right control is the other big problem that we're having. This here could be an option. A good one actually. But unfortunately, we can't get out. Once we're in, we can not get out anymore. Um, potentially full cover and kill the collector drone. 
which oh wait 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 that's maybe the wrong play maybe the right play actually is uh, going to destroy the mech two four six seven that would require maximum damage though but it is possible Let's draw the Overwatch fire. Can almost reach them with a grenade, so this here has not drawn Overwatch. Uh, that is not working as I hope it would work. We definitely could finish one of them. Injure the other one. The mech is a problem. I don't know if they do have micro missiles, but you know how mechs are. You don't want them to linger around for a long period of time. On the other hand, this here would be a secure kill, maybe even a second hit. I think we gotta take pieces of uh, the uh, of uh, the battlefield at this point. Not the greatest use of a grenade, but not that bad either. Can't reach the mech, but what we can do is we can kill the collector drone with 100% chance and remain in full cover and not trigger the overwatch. So it's okay. I'm not proud of uh, this uh, turn, but it's not the worst turn either. Nice. The one guy who had counterplay has now been mind controlled. Definitely got to deal with a with a mech. <laughs> okay, that's a nasty mech, melee mech. Okay. Okay, I think I do have an option of how to get out of this mess, though. I, I guess that'll be okay. Dilly moves up. This here solves the mind control. Luckily, I brought a mind uh, a flashbang with me. Let's make sure we're healing. Not sure if we can still win this. That arm is tough. If if we want to win this, I gotta go in and go in guns blazing so hmm. does sona have enough hit points to actually pull this off if we're not successful mind spin is back um reanimation is back up he will potentially take that two shots this guy cannot really move that far so it's going to be one disoriented shot into full cover another one i don't like the odds and we will potentially lose another turn up here. 90% chance. 4 damage is not enough. 100% chance for 5 points of damage. It sucks because this move here is the safe one. But we're going to lose uh, the mission 
we will lose it. Uh, I won't be able to be there in time. The other one is effectively trading potentially one of uh, the uh, soldiers here for a for the chance to get the reward of uh, an uh, scientist, and I think we need the scientist more. So <sighs> sonar, there you go. It's unfortunately not a kill, but it is close to a kill. Not good. Okay, this one needs to miss. Good, we're down to one round. We gotta deal with the... We gotta deal with this, uh, with the target. Two, four, six points of damage. So Dilly G still has full uh, health, which means he can uh, and should survive a potential overboard shot. Which is not happening, which is good, because this year, hopefully, gets rid of uh, that stupid enemy. This is the highest damage that we can dish out 66 percent chance of being successful come on no. <laughs> oh. wide into the open The pain, the suffering. I hate to be in the open. But we can't uh, heal and kill at the same time. <coughs> this guy here has still five hit points left over. So I think the name of the game here is minimizing damage. To make sure that at least some of the soldiers will survive. Sonar is in a critical condition. And we have cannon standing wide in the open so a protocol to give him some more survivability At least we know where all right that paid dividends he's quasi in partial cover that's okay that's okay that's okay Ooh. Okay, we're still we're still in the game, guys. We're still in. How many is that now? The mech is down. All right, that's a hundred percent kill. That's a hundred percent kill. I think we're staying in full cover for now.
Grell moves up. And is this going to be the final shot? Yes, it is. What? Not done? Oh, okay. I was about to nicely stretch my limbs and be like, okay guys, this was a pretty difficult mission. Yada, yada, yada. But no. Oh yes, okay. <laughs> Ooh. No, that was... Uh, mm. The firefight itself was not that difficult had I had the chance to continue to play defensively. If, if you by default have three plus pots um, activated, then you're forced to simply play defensively or like push into enemy territory with uh, sometimes uh, flanks that, that are going to happen or just with uh, making yourself much more vulnerable. And the problem with that is um, it's actually an interesting scenario that the yellow uh, alert mod brings up. You either win the firefight um, without, hopefully without losing uh, too much health, but you will lose the mission for sure, or you're uh, rolling the dice in order to see whether or not you can pull it off. In this particular mission, we rolled the dice and were lucky, uh, and it worked uh, well. But there was a very realistic chance that uh, Euler um, and or Sonar are not going to make it. So we're going to invest in Lightning Hands. Dilly G has done a fantastic job. Sonar, just very, very good. Um, we, however, want Shadow Step to not trigger uh, Overwatch Fire. A revival Protocol is better than Haywire Protocol for what we're trying to do. Haywire is great, but we need uh, counterplay against stun and other uh, and other abilities. I love blast padding, but shredder is the way to go for now. Blast padding will get a bit later. And we got a scientist, plus we countered the dark event, which was important. So there was a lot on the there, there was more on the line in this mission than uh, has met the eye originally. So we also got the option for soldier bonds. Um, we got our first bond. Sonar and Grell. And this here is just cruel. <laughs> so much wounding. I think I will need to scan uh, for wounding time reduction, elsewise my next mission is going to be an auto loss. But let's continue making contact. <clears throat> and then we're scanning for faster healing times. Very good. All right. We're immediately going for squad side uh, upgrade, squad size upgrade number one, and Barbie will become a grenadier because that's what we need right now: more grenadiers, more bodies. Low intel, power at capacity. Yeah, we we do have a few problems, but nothing to uh, be too concerned about. Additional rookies wouldn't be too bad. Maybe we're actually doing that and i'm just trying to train more commander we've established contact with the local resistance and we're ready to move on the alien black site on your order advent's been keeping this facility a closely guarded secret we should make sure our troops are ready for a tough fight before we send them out good in terms of just healing I've updated our let me just shortly take a look here Roby, inappropriate Murphy, and Sona would be relatively soon available again. Enderis is available as well. I think we can pull it off without that extra uh, healing. And we got a faction hero, plus two promotions.
All mission rewards increased by uh, 15%, that's good. And vengeance isn't too bad either, not in a run like this. We got two promotions out of it, which means implacable here uh, becomes a, another ranger. That's well, not bad. Uh, we could have used another one. He still looks like a terrorist from Counter-Strike. And uh, Ataxia becomes a new specialist. That is quite good as well. Like I mentioned, we could use some of uh, them. Okay, fantastic. So far, so good. Overall, armory is uh, filled, filled enough. We got um, three grenadiers, uh, three rangers. We still need grenadiers, two sharpshooters, uh, three specialists, and a templar. Ooh, Hogbite. Hogbite has joined. I love it. The man, the legend, Eric Hogbite Anderson. I will potentially use him. Okay, and we're looking for a supply raid. Dark Elder Raiders, so for the first time we're seeing yet another faction here. Raid the Advent Train could be highly, highly lucrative for us. Uh, Operation God Giant, that is. And it just so happened that we have a five-man team, uh, which means we would have Grell uh, on this mission uh, to continue climbing the ranks. We would have um, Roby as a ranger, that's good, a uh, specialist ranger. We have a sharpshooter with Enders, oh, that is good as well. We're missing a grenadier, that's a bit of a problem. But we could go in with another Templar. And maybe another specialist, just so that I can get all of the specialists kind of to that sergeant rank, a little bit higher even captain, where they do have enough healing. So our priority should be to get three to four specialists going. I would be expecting that not all of them uh, will survive, as this is a level campaign, and I'm fully expecting to see operatives die throughout the campaign and yeah hogbite definitely will will be used in the mission um, the templar and getting one going will be quite crucial for our success other than that we are almost done with magnetic weapons which is a fantastic feeling month number two um uh, resistance ring is uh, almost done as well. Month number two, and if you just expand it, uh, supply drop in seven days. So end of month number two, magnetic weapons would have been researched. That is not an easy feat to do. That's like really rushing it, which means even before, way before um, uh, more difficult enemies like the uh, mechs are going to join, uh, we're going to see magnetic weapons, which is great. That'll also give us, uh, once we upgrade all of the weapons, that'll give us quite a boost. And uh, yeah, in, in terms of supply drops, we're still fine. We now got 50 additional supplies, uh, so we're uh, chilling at 250 supplies, which is great as an income. It will fuel all of our research needs for now. In terms of research afterwards, I want to upgrade uh, armor ASAP, so that'll be the next big thing. Um, because I'd like to use more of uh, the utility items and of course we need to get out of that zone of being one shots anyways that's the end of today's episode thanks so much for watching if you enjoy the content leave a like and a comment down below and see you in two days bye bye